Hello and welcome. My name's Kathy A. And this weekend I thought I would take a little excursion and take you along with me on a field trip. I know I usually do makeup oriented videos, but every now and then I think because as we learned this past year, makeup isn't everything. <laughs> There's a lot of things in life that make it far more interesting. And I took a little day trip on Saturday to a very interesting location just south of the New Hampshire border in a little town called Methuen, Massachusetts, is a most unique cemetery. It's called the Hillside Acre Animal Cemetery. And yes, this is not your Stephen King couple of kids with a cross and hand marker. Uh, name of Rover on a, on a cross somewhere. This is 18,000, 18,000 graves devoted and in total love and tribute to pets, to service dogs, to war heroes, to police heroes, to fire dogs, to the family pet. And I thought what I would do is give you a little bit of history of this place and give you a full tour um, without too many spoilers so you can enjoy exploring this place on your own, but just a little bit of history of this wonderful cemetery. Horses. No one worked harder on the farm or in life than the fateful horse. They were used as main transportation. They pulled carts and heavy loads and helped with a plethora of duties. Once the automobile was introduced in the 1920s and mechanical farm equipment, horses were rendered less and less useful and were soon sent to the slaughterhouse to become meat. Mrs. Harriet Nevins of Methuen, Massachusetts was quite concerned and an animal activist of her day. In 19 17, she donated her properties and her land upon her death to the MSPCA. She also donated an ambulance for horses because she was very concerned about the plight of the horses. And she gave a $5,000 grant so that horses could come and retire instead of being sent to slaughter and cows and sheep, chickens, pigs, and goats could come and live, and a rescue shelter was soon built. And then from there, an adoption center for dogs and cats and rabbits and birds and mice and rats. You could get puppies and senior dogs and a plethora of other types of animals. They soon became a veterinary hospital, a nonprofit where no animal is turned away, even if the owner cannot pay for the surgeries. Here, thousands of dogs and cats and other animals are saved. The cemetery. This was formed in 1917 to allow those who had loving pets who had passed away to have a tribute and some place to visit and show their respects and visit after they died. Pets are such a huge part of our lives and they show unconditional love. So a burial ground made just for pets seemed the perfect thing. This is the older section of the graveyard and the uh, initial graves were this size and this is Polly. Polly is 92 years old and he's the oldest animal in the cemetery. You'll see all kinds of different tributes and markers for different animals, granite and marble stones, wooden stones, handmade clay stones, statues.
It looks like a people cemetery, but it's a very, very special place. We saw several visitors when we were here on Saturday. People really loved their dogs and their cats and their horses and their mice and their birds. Now some animals you'll see have kerchiefs on and that is from a lady who takes a weekly walk through the cemetery. She puts scarves on the dogs at winter time so that she said to keep them warm in the winter. Some of the monuments are very plain and some quite ornate with photographs inlaid and poetry, inscriptions, tributes to those they love and miss. Religious statues and statues of St. Francis of Assisi are very dominant around. Some are simple and some a little more elegant. Some of these lanterns glow at night. This is the newer section of the cemetery when you first go in on the main right side. And in some cases, the lichen has sort of taken over the stones. And the elements have caused a bit of ravage to some of the older stones, especially. Here's little Max, seven and a half years. And you see um, religious um, symbols on some of the graves as well. There's a variety of religious uh, sayings on some of the graves of various faiths. I love the names of some of the uh, animals. There's Winston. And good boy. You see good boy a lot on the different stones. There's a military one. A very well-loved kitty. In doing research for this particular video, it was really amazing what is out there as far as war dogs, as far as dogs and their uses in World War I, World War II, Vietnam, 
and all of the modern wars from Afghanistan to present. Unbelievable what they had animals do with them who accompanied them and helped them get through a treacherous time. And they also went on very dangerous missions with the soldiers, sometimes even donning gas masks. You know, they didn't enlist and they didn't sign up for this, but they are war veterans from World War I through World War II through Vietnam and all the current wars. The dogs accompanied soldiers on their missions, carrying supplies, search and seek, looking for explosives and wearing, yes, gas masks. In Vietnam, they were companions. They were warning sh signals for the enemies and they made some lifelong friends. Ironically, at the end of the Vietnam tour, most of the dogs were euthanized. They do appear on the wall in Washington. In modern wars, the dogs were used for bomb sniffing and saved many, many lives and were given full military honors upon their death and burial. Police dog heroes start as puppies and they're trained with a police officer to become a proud canine officer. Many are loved and respected. They apprehend suspects. They search and rescue during tragedies or missing persons. They find drugs. Several heroes have stood out and one in particular, Geo, received a 30 car procession for his funeral in Tewkesbury. Um, the procession went to the cemetery and he had full police honors burial. Police dogs are more than just animals. Their service. There is no rhyme or reason to the burials and some of the older graves are mixed in with the new ones. Different faiths are mixed together. Different dogs, different animals. Some of the little toys are quite poignant to see on the graves. Some of the graves are not yet with their stones. They have uh, markers, temporary markers. It's quite a vast four acre grouping of land and it's filling up quickly as people become more attached to their pets and animals. There's a dog and a cat. And this says it all, doesn't it? And in horses, there are many horses buried in the cemetery, some full body, some cremated. And often the bridles are stuck on the grave 
in loving tribute. There are also horse statues within the cemetery. It's beautiful. He has some lanterns for night, solar lanterns that go off. Chief. And some of the decorations are quite simple but touching. Here's a fire dog. Possibly a Dalmatian. Here's some homemade clay markers, lovingly made for their friend who's passed away. Beautiful red rose on that grave. And there's some nice plantings there. It's really quite an amazing assortment of tribute stones. This particular dog statue is wearing the real dog's collar. Our babies, aww. St. Francis of Assisi again. Oh, and a little toy left for Pretzel Sexton. When you think of service animals, most of us think, oh, it's the seeing eye dogs. But animals are therapy dogs, and they also can tell if you're going to have a seizure. They also visit nursing homes and hospital recovery rooms, and they cheer people and help them get better. This is actually a grave for Charlie Brown and Mrs. Brown. They're monkeys. And they're Simba. These temporary markers are until the stones are in place. And you can see how large the plots are side by side. And there's some toys there, some flowers. People do come and tend to the graves of their animals. Here's a fairly new one where they've put the uh, sod on. Lucky. St. Francis again. I love the little angel dog statues, so sweet. There's a beautiful portrait and a beautiful etching of these two dogs. Double hearts for these. There's a rainbow bridge. And a bench 
There are several benches around the cemetery for you to sit and uh, think about things. One was erected by a lady who lost her mother at 9-11 and then buried her pets there when they passed away. costs about $700 to have your pet interred here. Includes the grave and perpetual care. And most wonderful is all of the toys people leave for their pets. That person, I think, left every toy for their pet that they played with in life. And this one has decided to have a picture of himself with his dog. And he has a second dog up in the corner, you see. Very well done. I just love these etchings. They're just so beautiful. They were done from portraits of the animals. Cooper. One of the most heartwarming things I found about this cemetery was the feeling of total love and devotion and loss that people felt when their pets passed away. Some of the tributes written in poems and ins inscribed on these stones and some of the beautiful artwork of the um, etchings and the photographs of these wonderful animals is really, really unique and, and interesting. And I think you'd really enjoy a visit here. As we head on over to the older section, you can see that the graves are more uniform. These gravestones were kind of the standard that the graveyards supplied in the older days when they first opened. Now each of the graves is numbered and uh, they are all categorized and kept um, intact. So if you have a, say, if you want to know about uh, Missy who died in uh, 1934, um, and you know, they would be able to find that dog for you based on the number on the gravestone that they have in their records. They have tried to preserve and keep all of the gravestones in their normal place. Some of them are actually um, overgrown in trees. Some of them you can see uh, they have been knocked over, but they have been lovingly placed back upright in some cases. And there's quite a hill to go up to uh, the older graves. This is the oldest section where the first few graves were done in 1917 to 1920. You can see a lot of Depression era dogs as well. It's almost overwhelming how many different graves there are, and how many different sayings and names. These are the older graves from the 1917 to 1920 range. That's me kind of gimpy going up the hill, <laughs> having a trouble walking up the hill. It's really quite pleasant and peaceful up on this hill though. It's a large hole there. I was trying to figure out what had made it. But you can see how vast and large it is, all of these pets. 
It's really quite beautiful. Within the four acres of walking, it's a really nice stroll in the afternoon. Uh, the hill's very, very steep. <laughs> I mean, uh, Gimpy Lake here, I had a little bit of trouble getting up one of the uh, older sections hills because it's extremely steep and there are a lot of chipmunk holes and uh, uh, different types of unusual roots from the trees uh, that have overgrown some of the areas. But the place is amazingly well kept and landscaped and you can tell is loving care involved in the upkeep of this cemetery and it has many visitors all the time. Every year there is a Memorial Sunday set out for 
the tribute to the pets and everybody purchases a little lantern which gets set by their particular pet's grave and the proceeds will go to help with the upkeep of the cemetery. This is a really beautiful uh, service and it's something that everybody who has a pet in the cemetery really enjoys. While there are many different types of animals and pets uh, buried here in the cemetery, one of the more unusual aspects of this cemetery is that there are also humans buried with their pets. Yes, um, legislation was passed recently where uh, human remains may be interred with their pets. And this is only legal in four of the 50 states here in the U.S., which is kind of an interesting thing. Uh, there's some kind of rule or law about uh, mixing animal remains with human remains. I have no idea why. Maybe it has something with crime scene investigation. I don't know. But whatever it is, there are humans actually buried in with uh, their pets. And there are rumored to be between 12 and 20 humans buried in the cemetery along with their pets. Some of them are noted on the gravestones which feature the pet and then the person is <laughs> down as just a tiny little name at the bottom is oh by the way like an afterthought. <laughs> anyway, um, this is one of the people who was buried with her princess and her husband said that when it is his turn he too will join the princess and his wife. So I hope that you have enjoyed today's video all about the Hillside Acre Animal Cemetery and thank you to Mrs. Harriet Nevins for her generous contribution of land and buildings to the MSPCA so that they are able to continue their fine work as both a veterinary hospital, a shelter, an adoption center, for all types of animals and of course the cemetery. I'll be back with you in the next video back to my normal lipstick and blush and mascara self. <laughs> I hope all of you are having a safe and wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Toodles.